All right, good morning, everyone. I'm live here, and we're going to interview this guy. Um, his name is John Fisher. I have met John a while ago. We've probably been buddies for about 15 or 16 years or so. And so I'm about to dial him live. We'll see where it takes us. Uh, here we go. John, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm good. I'm holding in my hand a picture of you so everybody knows what you look like and I'm sticking a finger at it. <laughs> I hope it's a good picture. It is. It's the one you emailed me. I didn't pull anything funny off the internet. I found the one where you look very, very, very professional. And I've, and, I've, and, I've, and I've put nothing on it, so I'm going to put it here so everybody knows what you look like. Here we go. Outstanding. It's good. So how's San Francisco? Awesome. So, how's family? Family is good. I uh, actually brought uh, brought my oldest with me on this trip. Uh, oh, pretty cool. You... Yeah, he's heading up to college next week, so I said, hey, why don't you come with me? You're breaking him right into real estate world. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, is this the first day or second day? So, technically, yesterday was the first day. Okay. Uh, which is uh, a really, uh, you know, focused on uh, uh, technology and from, you know, from the development side, the engineering side, and uh, uh, that was yesterday. And then today is a lot of the uh, uh, agent and broker stuff, uh, as well as the you know, like technology section, now it's more broker. And then tomorrow is really the big kickoff. That's when uh, Brad Emmer will do his, uh, you know, Okay, I'm sorry if we're having a bad reception with voice because we, we, we've tried this all morning. We seem to be having a difficulty with the microphone, so we'll figure this out. So I'm going to dive right in because I know your time is of an essence, and so I've got some questions I wanted to ask you. I'm going to move the phone a little closer towards the camera, and we'll go from there, okay? Okay, whatever you want. All right, cool. So tell me... You know, I'm just going to tell people that you've been a successful broker owner of uh, multiple different businesses. You understand real estate business probably more than a lot of people I know. You've been on the recruiting side. You've been on the sales side. We lost you to the world of uh, REO and Relo probably about seven years ago, um, and you took a really interesting job. Uh, you want to you want to tell us what you do? Sure. Yeah. So. Okay, uh, so you seem to know a lot about Relo. I'm going to dive right in with the next question and ask you a simple question. So, how is Relo business in 2017? Well, I have to tell you, the Relo business is very strong in 2017. Um, I think for a while there was this idea that things were going to slow down and things were going to change because 
if anybody's been uh, in the real industry or in the real estate industry for a long time, you'll remember when everybody was um, being relocated, there were lots of people, their homes were being bought, they were being sold. Uh, of course, agents, we were all paying 38, 40% uh, uh, referral fees back to the relocation management companies. And that still goes on, but it, there's just a lot less of it. But that's not because people aren't being relocated globally. That's because less and less people are buying houses. So, and, and it's, I think, you know, we've, um, I hear it often that, well, you know, it's not like the good old days where, you know, I'd work with 10 real clients and, and list their homes and, and work with the buyers. Well, those clients are still out there. They're just renting instead of buying. Okay. And so what do you think, what are your predictions for 2018? What do you think is going to happen in 18 with the real business? Is it going to continue being the same? You're going to see upswing of people buying versus renting. Um, you know, what does that look like? What do you think in your world? What is that prediction? Sure. Well, there's still definitely people buying and selling. I'd, I'd say there just aren't as many as what we were <clears throat> sort of used to seeing, uh, you know, back in the mid 2000s. If, if, if you were around then, there were a lot of them. I'd say there's less buying and selling, but, but a ton more renting. And one of the things you have to consider is it's also because of the demographic shift. So, you know, if you look at all the different stats that are out there, um, you know, probably the one, one of the most compelling ones that, that struck me recently was that by 2020, which is only, you know, less than two and a half years away, by the way, by 2020, 60% of the workforce is a millennial. And that's, that's, a, that's a scary, it's a scary so, thought. What's that? It's a scary thought. It, it, well, it is, but, but it should also be something that should excite people because, I mean, here's what, here's what you, know, you should be thinking about, like, beyond 2018. How, how are you positioned as an agent, as a local broker expert on housing, how are you positioned to satisfy the needs of, of this enormous population? <clears throat> and, and if you're not, you, you better be thinking about it because that's the reality. Um, and it's also a very long reality, it's a long tail. You know, you gotta remember, I think they're saying now that, you know, the millennial generation is anybody from uh, born in 2000, okay, uh, all the way, so that's 17 years old, all the way to, I think, 34, all right? Okay. That's a, that's a, that's a long time of a whole bunch of people who have really similar interests and needs and, you know, yes, you're still going to do your, your, your purchase and sales and, and they're going to be relo based and that's great. But start thinking about how you can satisfy these renters who want to, you know, probably move quickly. They're going to move every year or two years, probably at the most. They're going to be looking for urban centers. Um, they're going to be looking for walkability. You know, it's not, it's not like the good old days where they'll just end up out in the suburbs with a white picket fence someplace. Okay, well, it's interesting you said that, and we haven't talked about that because we haven't caught up in a while. Uh, we're doing, I'm going to kind of pitch this while we're on the phone, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug things for me. We're opening an office in Columbus, and you know Columbus really well, you've been here a thousand times. Uh, we're opening an office in Italian Village. You know, if I walk out of that office front door, and that's, you know, the short north Italian Village downtown market, I look out that front door and you nailed it, I can count 12 to 15 cranes and buildings coming out of the ground, you know, for that particular generation X and Y coming in, wanting to live in an urban setting, you know, where they can walk, go get a cup of coffee, get dinner. It's not a suburban setting. We're, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve and hoping to open an office there by our projected day February. We'll see how it goes, you know, how that happens. Um, so that's interesting to hear it from you because it validates what we're trying to do. So tell me in your world, so we'll talk about your exciting project in a minute, but tell me what is the real world doing overall in their mind, you know, what are the new trends? What do you see besides the trends of people moving into sub, you know, out of suburb into urban development, a lot more tenants versus owners? What are some other trends are you seeing? Uh, hey, so I'm having a hard time hearing you all of a sudden. Um, okay. But I think what you asked me was, what are some of the trends that we're seeing overall in, in the real world? Is yes. That you're me? Yes, exactly. Okay, perfect. Um, well, so certainly more and more renters versus buyers. Um, 
uh, you know, that of course is also very much tied to you know who who it is that we're starting to to relocate now, and it's this entire you know millennial and uh, you know Gen you know even even Gen X. I mean, I'm Gen X, so you know my my age group. I'll say our age group, the beam, um, and then um, you know obviously this millennial generation. That's that's also a huge trend. Uh, that's you know very obvious and very simple to see. Um, the, the other, of course, is what we just talked about is walkability, being able to be in urban centers, et cetera. I'd say the last thing that we're seeing um, is, is a globalization. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's more and more we're seeing people not just move domestically. They're not just going from Columbus to, to Seattle or to Seattle to Jacksonville. Um, we're seeing more and more international moves. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot more activity in Asia. Um, so, for example, we uh, just uh, acquired a company in Hong Kong. Um, we're seeing uh, a, a great interest in Hong Kong and, and mainland China. Um, a lot of American companies are relocating people there um, and vice versa. Um, and so there's a, there's a cultural thing that's going on right now that, you know, not everybody's the same. And so when you're relocating people globally, whether they're coming into Columbus from another country or whether they're going out, um, they're thinking about all the cultural differences and they're, you know, that's, that's a big shift. Um, but we're seeing it more and more. It's not as simple as, you know, I moved to London for three years. Now it's, I went to Hong Kong for one year, then I ended up in Mexico City, and now I'm back in, in the U.S. for a year. Um, and I don't think that's going to stop. I think it's going to increase. I think we're going to see shorter and shorter relocations, again, whether they're renting, and more and more uh, diversity as far as what, what locations and countries that they're, they're heading off to. Okay, so I'm going to lean towards the phone so, I can, so you can hear me better. Um, so a couple of things. You guys bought a company in Hong Kong. So tell me, I'm going to dive right into the second you know, part of that question. I know you told me you're working on an exciting project and you guys bought a company in Hong Kong. Tell me about that. Tell me what you're doing. Yeah, so um, kind of, you know, I mean, this is going to sound self-serving because I just told you what all the trends were <laughs> in Relo right now. But, sure. but, but, we're, but it is self-serving. We're doing it on purpose. Um, we actually operate a, a, a real estate brokerage dedicated solely to renters uh, who are relocating for work. And we, we operate that in, in Manhattan, in New York. And we've done that for a number of years. Um, hey, my kind of, folks in New York, are you listening? Because this guy has a renter brokerage. They do leads. Sorry, I just had to say that. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead, sure. Go ahead. Um, Yeah, so, so we, we, we've been doing that in New York for about eight years now um, and really just serving our existing clients. So when, when a relocation company reaches out to us and wants us to do these destination services in New York. Uh, we help them find an apartment as well, and we get paid a commission for it. Um, well, we're expanding that model. Uh, we're actually um, going to start doing that. I think I mentioned Mexico City. We're actually going to be expanding into Mexico City. We're going to be, uh, we already do it in Hong Kong. This, this company that we acquired already does real estate transactions there, as well as destination services. Um, and I'm actually, part of my visit out to San Francisco is to, to meet a few brokers out here to talk to them about what opportunities we have uh, available to us here. Because again, we think there's a, a definite interest um, in this, you know, kind of a next 10 year span of, of corporate relocatee who are going to be looking specifically for an apartment, place to live, place to rent, in these diverse and interesting cultural centers, urban centers like Hong Kong and London and New York, San Francisco, et cetera. Um, so that's exactly what we're doing. We're actually uh, really carving out a nice little real estate brokerage niche um, for that relocating for work transferring. And we're pretty excited about it. It sounds like it's going to be uh, a cool, you know, multi you know, country tour for you here in the next couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds absolutely. Like I'll be doing a little bit of traveling, fun. that's for sure. All right, so two more questions. First one, kind of building onto all this, if you have to, and you've, you've over the years, worked with know, hundreds of realtors, 
you know, in, in a role as a broker or a mentor. Uh, we've had you come down to Columbus before and do classes for us. Um, if you had to give an advice to uh, agent today, mm -hmm. and it was just one nugget, what would it be? Well, I would. I know. I, I know it's a curve. I know it's a curveball, but you know me, right? I typically try to sneak one or two in. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I if I were an agent today, um, you know, Columbus is, as you know, a lot of you know, is really a testing ground for a lot of companies to to uh, test products and services, and, and I mean, it's a, it's a great market um, from from that perspective. And so, while I'm talking about all these, you know, kind of exciting and, and sort of sexy cities, you know, Hong Kong and London and New York, fact of the matter is, there's plenty of people relocating into Columbus as well. Um, and so what I would tell you is, uh, you know, if, if you're an, an agent down there or a broker, I would start thinking about how you're really focused on this millennial generation. You know, I mean, I'm talking about renters, but certainly some of them are going to be buyers. Um, and I would start thinking about, you know, how, how are you culturally aware of, of these different populations? Um, so, you know, <clears throat> the number of, uh, engineers and developers coming from India and coming from China and coming from other countries that have vastly different cultures than what than, than what you know we we have uh, you know here in the states. Um, that's not going to stop. <clears throat> that's a lot of people, and 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 they're all coming to the U.S. to work for global 1,000 companies who want them here and want to give them that experience. So, you know. Start learning more about those cultures. Start learning more about what those those uh, you know whether they're renters or buyers doesn't matter. They're customers. Start finding out what those folks are going to be interested in, what they're going to want, and, and what what differences they have because those those are your next customers for sure. That's a really good advice, actually, because a lot of people focus on a certain you know market and certain space, and you know expanding that I think is where, <clears throat> where a lot of that's going to come from. So I hope. Whoever's listening out there, they make a note of that. All right, so I'm going to end it with one last question, and I appreciate your time because I know you're there. I know you with your kid. I know you have a lot of work to do today. I know that you know Inman Connect could be key. That's overwhelming to some people. There's so many other speakers and folks, and so much info. So I appreciate you carving your time out. So the last question I have is, again, you know, in the perfect world, I mean, you know, you've got all these real estate agents and brokerages out there, and everybody's got their niche and everything else, and you've shared with us what the market looks like in the future. Tell me if you were an agent today and you were in, again, in the trenches and you've given me a piece of advice of what the agent should start looking at, what tool would you buy? Or what tool would you use? Or what piece of technology do you think, based on everything you've seen, you know, between US and China and Hong Kong and real estate agents you've met and you talk to a ton of really smart people, give me one real estate tool you think is cool. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> so again, I apologize. I'm having a hard time hearing you here. It's, it's okay. a little bit louder here than I. Than no, I no, realized, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go louder. What, Give me one tech tool. Tech? One tech tool you think is awesome. If you had to pick a tech tool that you've seen across the world, agents use or any companies use, it doesn't have to be real estate. If you saw or if you've used a tech tool that you think will be effective, what do you think that would be? Yeah. So. It, you know, it's interesting. Um, uh, as you know, Vadim, I'm a little bit of a nerd, and so I'm always paying attention to the That's why I'm asking. What's out there. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? Here, here's what's interesting. I, all, all, all the technology that's really been developed in the last few years for real estate seems to be focused on either acquiring the customer or closing the customer. So you've got, you know, the Zillows, the, the search engines, the, all of the things that, that attract and draw customers, right? Yeah. And then we've had, we've had CRMs and, and systems, you know, that, that never get used. Top producers been around for 20 years, right? And, and oh, yeah. nobody ever uses it correctly. Yep. But it's all about, you know, you know keep, keeping those, those warm leads comfortable. And now, of course, we've, we've entered the, Let's, let's make closing easier, the dot loops and all that stuff. And I think where, where the industry has really fallen short is in that 
interaction between that relocating person, that buyer, that renter, whoever they are, and their agent. That piece, uh, thinking about how, how do you interact with me, right? I mean, we all still use really crappy MLS software that has search functionalities where I can, you know, create a portal for my customer, but they all suck, right? Yeah, they're all. So I think thinking about how to interact with that consumer uh, is, is the next big thing. There's a really interesting company that um, I've gotten to know the, the founders of it. It's called Quo, Q-U-O. Okay. Um, I, actually, I actually think they're here at Inman. I haven't seen them yet, but I think they're here in the Startup Valley. Okay. Um, they're, doing, they're doing some really amazing stuff <clears throat> where they're creating really quick, simple, web mobile-based interactions where I can share listings and, and it's it's basically that that that's that portal piece that most MLSs have, but but good. Um, and they're they're doing some really great stuff. Uh, again that's called Quo, Q U O. Um, and then the other company that I think is doing a really great job, um, <clears throat> and they're actually from Columbus. Uh, it's a couple of guys uh, that, you know, kind of, you know, a couple of guys in a dream. Uh, it's called Move Easy. And uh, they're making some really great software that uh, it's not so much the interaction with the customer, but it's it's kind of afterwards, like they need to get their their uh, driver's license, they need to get their address changed, they need to have a moving checklist. Um, Move Easy is a really simple, short uh, little application that um, is really simple. They're super uh, realtor friendly. They've got some really cool things where you can just embed their software right into your own site. Um, and it's it's pretty cool. And they're right out of Columbus. They uh, they started in a little startup uh, uh, incubator there, and and um, they're they're trying to grow it. So look into them as well. Awesome. Interesting that I live here and I never heard of them. I had to talk to you from San Francisco to find out about a company right underneath my nose. I gotta probably wake up a little more. Um, so thank you for your time. Uh, we appreciate the the, 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 the you know, time you've given us today and the little nuggets of wisdom. I am sure I will see you soon at some point when you get into CBOS or I venture to a Cleveland Indians game. Um, and again, as always, it's nothing but a pleasure. I am going to hang up on you now and let you go spend time with your kid and do your thing that you need to do at Inman and tell Carrie I said hello. I certainly will. Have, right. uh, have a great day, guys, and uh, thanks, for, thanks for letting me do this. It was fun. All right. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, John. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So you heard it right from the guy, right? I mean, you couldn't oh, make it any better. Me. By the way, in all these interviews that I've been in, I've been using the SCOP. This time it has coffee in it. It's not empty, so I can go like this. Uh, so I want to thank Dom for sitting there for 15 minutes and holding this thing. And we're trying to set this up. We'll figure out a little better way next time, I think. Uh, we're hoping that our next interview is going to be with another industry guru, hopefully in about 20 days or so. Stay tuned for the announcements. Uh, we're pretty excited about every interview we have, but this one coming up also will be very special. And hopefully you'll learn something from it and maybe get some benefits out of what we're doing here in Columbus. From Next Home Experience, we're out.